Hi everyone. In our recent research, we analyzed the impact of net networking to real-time embedded systems. This resulted in a paper called How bad can it be to connect your critical embedded system to the internet, which I will present to you now. Firstly, our outline. I'll begin with a short introduction to real-timeness and interrupts. Afterwards, I'll go into the problem statement of our analysis paper and then a little bit deeper into the methodology we used, as well as, of course, our experiment results and, in the end, some takeaways of our work. Let's start with the introduction. So, real-time systems have really been around since the 80s. Um, you usually have controllers that are connected to physical machines and those um, controllers, again, have some sensors, for example, um, which uh, are used to control some actors. So you have a few real-time tasks running on those um, real-time systems, and these real-time tasks have priorities. And depending on that priority, a task will preempt the other tasks to get uh, the CPU time as soon as possible. So that's the one kind of software you have on those real-time systems. The other kind of software you have are ISRs. ISRs are interrupt service routines that are not scheduled by the real-time operating system scheduler, but rather are called right when an interrupt occurs. And an interrupt occurs or usually is necessary to even start any kind of switch in the scheduler. Obviously, this leads to two different kinds of priorities. So two different priority spaces, which means that no matter how important one task is, an ISR will always preempt it. When we talk about real-timeness real now, this of course is a problem, because usually when you create a real-time system, you, um, you measure how much time a task needs uh, and create its deadlines uh, due to that. When you now have the ISRs always preempting this task, the timing results will change and the real-timeness um, might not be uh, fulfilled anymore. However, this has not been a huge problem since there have not been a lot of I.O. interrupts anyway and you, m you needed most of them for your critical task. So there was a general procedure to just keep the ISRs very short. So what has changed now? Um, critical embedded systems now are connected to networks. Um, you see this in the Internet of Things, of course, in smart factories, uh, but also in city infrastructures, in any kind of auto autonomous machines uh, and an autonomous driving as well, of course. Um, however, there have been no changes to the general designs of microcontroller units with exception of the addition of network interface controllers, for example, Wi-Fi chips, and the networking procedures that are needed. This is a problem because the embedded devices are now connected to IP networks, in the Internet of Things, for example, and the network interface controller that is responsible for this is, of course, a new source of interrupts. And these interrupts are very unpredictable because the networks themselves are not part of the embedded system and cannot be seen by the developer of the embedded system, especially, of course, when you look at the Internet or other untrusted networks. So now even short handlers really matter because of a possible quantity. This is the reason why um, we decided to do a quantitative analysis of this problem to kind of detect the correlation between incoming IP packets and the timing of real-time tasks. We made a few assumptions for this. Firstly, we say that networks are untrustworthy, especially in the Internet of Things. Secondly, in our experience, we use Wi-Fi as main networking technology, since uh, many IoT devices right now also use Wi-Fi. Thirdly, we say that the compute resources on these devices are shared, so networking and critical tasks sh share the same hardware resources, which is very important. And lastly, um, for the devices we had a look at, uh, there are device-specific programming, programming frameworks, which we also used, mainly because using the Wi-Fi driver and networking um, software uh, was not possible without using these frameworks. Getting to our methodology, 
uh, we tested two different devices. The first one is the very popular ESP32, um, which has an inbuilt Wi-Fi chip. Uh, and the second one is the particle photon uh, with a P0 chip on it, which is an STM32 ARM core. Uh, and the device also has a Broadcom Wi-Fi chip. The framework here is called Device OS. The observed metrics we uh, had a look at. Um, firstly, we looked at the relative MCU utilization using an experiment where we counted computation loops um, in an observed task. So we have a very highly prioritized observed task, uh, run it for a certain amount of time and then count the computation loops inside. Um, of course, then we increase the number of packets sent to the device to see if there is a change in computation loops. The second metric we had a look at is lateness. We define lateness as the time by which a task misses its deadline. Its deadline. Uh, in this case, there's a fixed number of computation loops inside our observed task. And again, we uh, increase the number of packets sent per second and look uh, at the generated lateness. There also are two different test environments. The first test environment is um, a normal Wi-Fi traffic where we use um, the cores of our observed systems um, both uh, one for monitoring mainly and the other one for our observed task, the Wi-Fi driver and the networking tasks. Uh, and then we send real networking packet, network packets via Wi-Fi to the system. Secondly, um, there's a second test environment because as um, the, the Wi-Fi driver and some part of the networking task um, are closed source, uh, we needed to do also a simulation to get a view into what happens in a driver and the networking task. So um, we simulated this in a second setup where one core is used for the traffic generation um, and the second core uh, holds a pseudo driver which handles the, the pseudo um, network packets. What is also important for the first kind of our um, experiments so for the real Wi-Fi driver, uh, as these things are closed source, it was not possible to change the priorities inside the real-time operating system of the Wi-Fi driver and networking task, both on the ESP32 and the P0. So for our task, it was important to be crit as critical as possible, which is possible for the ESP32. In this case, you can be more important than the Wi-Fi driver and preempt it if necessary. For the P0 this is not possible. As you can see the highest priority will be shared with the Wi-Fi driver. You will see this in the results which are due now. So firstly the results of the lateness experiments um, on the for the pseudo driver, so for no real packets but simulated packets, you can see here a very a steep increase in lateness at some point when increasing the packets per second sent to the system until um, the whole CPU is used by the by the networking task and uh, there's no lateness generated anymore because the, the process can't run at all anymore. Um, the same is true for a low priority for the observed task, so a priority that is lower than the uh, networking tasks and for a priority that is higher than the networking task. The higher one uh, or the delay, the lateness generated for the higher is um, due to the ISRs that need to run and always, as uh, mentioned, um, preempt the observed task. Um, for real Wi-Fi packets, you have a similar, uh, a similar view here, um, only that the number of packets is uh, a lot smaller. So with real Wi-Fi packets the overhead becomes a lot higher than with a simulated one so less packets uh, are enough. However as you can see for the high priority of the observed task so when the observed task cannot be preempted by the Wi-Fi driver there is no impact to be seen which probably means that the Wi-Fi connection is cut off in this case. Uh, for the P0 side you have very similar uh, results for the high priority, um, which is shared with the Wi-Fi driver now, you see that there's a 50-50 uh, utilization between driver and, and, um, and the observed task. 
the cycle counter results are very very similar so you have um, in this case uh, cycle counts going down for higher numbers of packet rates uh, in both cases ESP32 and P0 additionally you can see for the real Wi-Fi packets uh, on the P0 side that the system actually crashes at some point the Wi-Fi system and the uh, uh, observed task gets uh, the full CPU again getting to our takeaways uh, firstly um, the performance and real-timeness really of any process is linearly dependent on the incoming traffic um, the we even saw that driver and systems crash um, when the packet rates get into the low thousands um, which of course means that the whole system itself is not very robust um, yet the impact largely is due to the driver and network stack overheads um, however this is not a big gain since the prioritization above the Wi-Fi driver is really only partially possible um, and as I said there was no measured impact of Wi-Fi generated ISRs when the driver is preempted probably because the Wi-Fi connection is cut off Concluding, critical tasks really need to be entirely independent of network capabilities in embedded systems in the Internet of Things um, because network interrupts would have to be uh, disabled for critical code blocks. Um, this means, of course, that command and control via uh, IP networks is not suitable for real-time systems because there you will never have an, uh, a complete independence between network capabilities and critical tasks of course this uh, really seems to stand in opposition to the general IoT expectations um, again uh, the, the, the investigated IoT programming frameworks seem to be really mainly designed for an easy entry and easy programmability rather than uh, low level access which of course leads to pr trouble when looking at critical embedded systems